Welcome to The Spirit of Business, episode number 89. What do you want to be known for? With Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Matt. I had an experience the other night. I was out for dinner and we're having a bit of a chat, some friends of I, and we're talking about um, just people and things. And somebody said they described another person as being, oh, that person's super smart. I go, oh, that's interesting. And then I thought to myself, that's probably something that people wouldn't say about me as a, as a thing, that they wouldn't say he's a super smart guy or something like that. And then I started to think about, you know, labels that we put on ourselves and on each other. And then somebody then spoke about that person as being a great golfer, okay? And so we describe people and then we attach a label to that particular person. And I was listening to the conversation with intrigue and just assessing what was actually happening. And then I started to reflect further the next day about saying, when you, because um, I also had a, a funeral that I attended, and when you go to funerals or when you hear about people passing away in the media, they'll also describe and put a label on people. And they typically don't say that person was a super smart person in their life. They say something like, you know, great family man or, you know, devoted mother to, to children or, you know, a loving relationship sort of thing. So they speak more of them at, at, more of people in terms of, I suppose, relationships rather than, than them as a person of what their talent is. And I think it just started to get me to thinking about the, the, the concept of coming, talking about purpose, but in a different way. So, you know, we, we often talk about in this podcast and, and in conversations we had about what's your purpose, what's the purpose of your business, what's the purpose of you as an individual. And then I was looking at it from the perspective of label, and then I was starting to think about it in, in, in terms of life work of what you are known for when you're passing. And all these start, thought, thoughts came into my head about, well, what am I known for? And we've had conversations about that historically as well. But it's just a, it's just a really interesting thing to start to break down the labels that we put on ourselves, on each other, on our businesses, on um, and the way we perceive ourselves compared to the way that other people perceive ourselves. What do we want to be known for compared to what we don't want to be known for? And it was just a really interesting thought process that I wouldn't mind sort of just talking further about today and, and getting a, a different perspective from it, from your perspective on how you see it as well. And what comes to me immediately is that different people and different groups of people would put different labels. I said to you a little bit earlier today, I'm going to embarrass you now, but amongst my clients, it's either Matt's gorgeous or Matt's lovely. But I'm sure amongst your clients, that's probably not the words that they would use because, uh, I don't know, it's a different group of people. I'm sure that yeah, they that... think that you're a lovely person, but I'm not sure that they would go around expressing it like that. When I met some of the people, that they're not necessarily people you hang out with a lot, but it was a group you were associated with. They were more like describing you as special or different, like you stand out from the crowd. That was their mm. perception of you. My clients think you're gorgeous. Your clients probably think you're a really reliable person who they can, you know, who will stand beside them. Um, I, I'm putting ideas into their mind. I don't know. It's, just, it's a funny thing to think about. It is. So what you're then describing is that that you can be different things for different people or labeled differently. You're not going to necessarily carry the same label all the way through your life, and probably not the same label from the same. From, from same people, you might get it from different people is what you're really saying there. And I suppose that starts to conjure up to say, well, what is it that we want to be known for? You know, what is it that we're trying to achieve in our lives is where my mind starts to go to. Yeah, and that's actually a challenging question to answer. Um, like, what do you want to be known for? Do you know what you want to be known for? It's, it's interesting. I was having a conversation about this with another uh, a friend of mine um, and I was talking about him and I said, you know, would you prefer to be known as um, a really good businessman, an entrepreneur or somebody who was a loving father and devoted to his family or, you know, all of the above, so to speak? 
<laughs> and I suppose that you you know it's one of those things where you know when I joked and said, well, what we you can come up with is to say, and you was a it was a a fantastic entrepreneur that created so much wealth that really supported his family and and was a loving father at the same time. So therefore, put it all into one sentence, so to speak. Did did he say what he would want? No, he didn't. He didn't sort of, we just joked about it because I tried to put it all into one sentence and we just laughed and then just went on to the next conversation that we're having. But but, but I think it's, it, it, and I think the answer is probably where I came to is, is putting it all together to say, well, it's not just one thing. It's you would like to be known for multiple things that, and this is that balance thing that you say, well, you know, if you were good at business, for example, um, and you're good at sport and you were good at uh, relationships and you were good at being a father and you, or a mother and you were good at being, you kind of want to feel that you were good at all these things or known for all these things without the compromise of something else that's very meaningful that, will, that, that people see as meaningful as well. So I think it was kind of this balance thing is... Um, but then maybe that's just my lens because I think because I value the balance. I value making sure you're not being focused on one thing without thinking about the detriment or the cause or the effect of something else. So maybe that's what I value is the is the balance. I mean, I wouldn't like to. It doesn't really make sense to me to say this. I was going to say I wouldn't like to kind of achieve my purpose and be a terrible wife. Um, Correct. But on the other yeah. hand. My purpose, I couldn't achieve it being a terrible wife, if you see what I mean. Like, it's part, like, my relationships are a part of my purpose. So it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to even imagine that. That's like having the wrong purpose to me. If you have a purpose that allows you to be a horrible person, um, I, you know, maybe sometimes I, I'm not easy or I'm difficult, but that's not my intention to be like that. That's just me. You know, struggling a little bit with situations. So the purpose, I, the purpose to me is important. Like, what am I, what am I trying to do? What am I creating? I don't know because when I'm dead, I don't, I don't know if it matters whether I'm known for it or not. What matters is, did things get done that were valuable? Yeah, that's right. But I suppose some people can be fixated on achieving certain things that may not be in that balance that you're talking about that you can't achieve without the relationships aspect of it, that that they want to create something um, in the science world or in the business world or, you know, they, they could be, um, you know, wanting to be, in the, you know, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, so to speak, okay? And could they do that and be a horrible person to all the relationships that they've got in their life? They, they could Absolutely. be, is, is the point. Um, so it still comes down to the individual in wanting to, and what they see is valuable to them in terms of, well, I value relationships, so therefore I'd like to be known as being good at relationships and being a good person in relationships, for example, if that's what you want to be known for. And if you're not known for that, you can probably feel like a sense of failure. If that was my focus and I didn't actually get known for that, therefore, does that mean I didn't fulfil what I was ultimately trying to achieve? So it makes me question what you mean by being known for something. Mm. Like if well, you think, mean... oh, I'm a really great husband and father and your kids never want to speak to you again, there's clearly a mismatch there. And I actually... That means you haven't achieved it. That's the point that I was just making then. You haven't achieved what you set out to achieve. If you want to be something, but then the result is you didn't get there. So when I'm talking about what do you want to be known for, it's coming back to the where we started with this concept of people judging you and putting a label on you. That's what you're known for. You're known for people being the you. smart. Yeah, that's what people say about you. Now, people, some people are going to say different things about you depending on their lens, like you spoke about before, about whether it's your clients, your wife, your children, your um, you know, suppliers, your, your friends, all that sort of type thing. Everybody's going to have potentially a subset or a different angle to it. Uh, but I still think it's, it's really important to, to reflect on these things, to, to, to stop and go, well, what is it? First of all, it needs to work out what it is. And secondly, um, you know, assessing how people would judge you based on that particular frame. 
It's interesting, my mother is a sculptor, quite a successful sculptor, and she always says, you don't decide whether you're an artist or not. You can create sculpture or you can paint or draw or whatever you do, but other people decide whether you're an artist. Because for her, artist is not an activity, it's an activity with quality, there's a kind of quality assigned to it. For me, I don't know whether I'm naive or, but I, I feel like my job is to do the best I can with my purpose, with the things that I'm all about. And it's entirely up to other people what they think about that. Obviously, if I get feedback from people where I think I'm doing something well and they say, no, it's not working for us, that's part of me trying to do the best I can. That, that feedback becomes a part of it. But what other people think of me, I know it's easy to be affected by it, but I don't see any value in being affected by it. I think we're affected by it just because we've kind of been brought up to think that it matters what other people think about us. Yeah, probably, that's probably not what my angle is that I'm affected by. It. It's just probably what people, maybe that comes down to the value of a contribution that you're making because people actually say, well, you're making a contribution because like, you know, I could describe you as a teacher. Okay, so, you know, therefore you're an educator and you teach people wisdom effectively. And now you could be a good teacher or a bad teacher, but effectively, like your, your mother could be a, 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 a good artist or a bad artist sort of type thing, but, but, you're, but you are something. Okay, so it can be, you can be at that sort of functional type role and then, and then people can actually judge your, you know, she was a good teacher, okay, or remember I said that person was described as being super smart, okay? So everybody has intelligence, but this person was classified as being super smart. So therefore, it's almost like you're elevated up into a higher status of uniqueness when people say, oh, Sarah was a, is a, an amazing teacher, okay? So therefore, it's, that's a different statement than it is that Sarah was a teacher. And I think that... Yes, you can. I'm not suggesting that we get caught up on it as individuals because that would mean that we need it. It's more of saying, well, oh, it's validation that the contribution that I'm making is seen in this particular way. It, it, I think there's something in that. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Like I, it's like I'm not feeling it yet. Um, or maybe I've switched off. I've deliberately switched off from that. I don't... I. I want to do what I'm doing um, and yeah I I think feedback is really useful I don't want I'm not sure that I want to be validated but I don't I'm not sure that I want my work to be validated by other people I want it to provide value for not it's not going to be for everybody but for some people um, yeah, I it's interesting. I think there's it's an word interesting value experience that, talking about it because um yeah. It is an interesting experience and and maybe and really I wasn't necessarily talking about it in terms to to say that that we get validated. I was probably coming from a different angle to say we well, often often get caught up in thinking about our purpose and thinking about business and thinking about what our purpose in business what our purpose is as an individual. And sometimes, and I know that this has been difficult for me to answer over the years about individual purpose. And so therefore, it was just a different way of thinking, a different question that I'm asking about what do I want to, what, what do people know me as or want to know me as? Does that give you a clue as to what somehow what your contribution and purpose is to the world? So it's kind of coming from a different angle. There could be something interesting, like if you think that this is what you're doing, but other people see it quite differently. Yeah. That, that's quite an interesting experience. I think that might have happened to me to some extent. I think it's other people who've gradually made me aware of certain things that I was doing that I wouldn't have claimed for myself um, or I wouldn't have possibly even known that I was doing those things. So other people actually kind of made me admit more than I would admit myself. 
Um, and it can go yeah. the other way as well. It can be that, you know, I, that I, I think that I'm doing amazing at something and other people give me feedback that shows that I'm not nearly as amazing as I think I am. But in my case, I would say it's been more the other way around that there have been times when the feedback that I've got. So what peop other people see me as rather than what I see myself as um, has been more than I would have probably even allowed myself to see. Yeah, it's interesting because where the conversation has gone to is more about um, the, the validation or contribution that you're making as opposed to where I was starting the conversation, which is around saying, well, what, what, is, our, what is our contribution? What do we want to be known for? Um, and then where it's moving into is to say, is, is that right that that's what we are known for because of what we want to be and what we seem to be? Is, is probably where the, the issue lies, which is what you just discussed then, to say, well, what I think I am and what other people see me as is sometimes there's a disconnect between the two. Yeah. And people sometimes ask, I remember years ago, somebody saying, what do you want to be known for? I think we were supposed to have a kind of handle, like Sarah's the, the something person. Mm. She's the, and people were all putting these kind of handles on themselves. Um, I wasn't very good at that exercise. <laughs> 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 it didn't probably make a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm trying to find the context in which it really makes sense to ask that question, what do you want to be known for? It is. It's really interesting because I actually don't, I, like you, probably struggle to answer it as well. Like I don't, I wouldn't, you know, when you described me before from different people in different groups, none of it really connects with me, to be quite honest. Like I don't sort of feel that that's who I am or what I am you know, here for, but it, it was just interesting to get people's view about who I am as an individual, which is which is nice because nobody said he's a rotten bloke. So I like that. that that's a good starting point because <laughs> I'd hate to think that that's what the case would be. But it's lovely to think that I'm known for good things um, and that's validating to know that you're on the right path. But I just want to understand or just trying to understand is to, to say, well, is this even a thing or should you even worry about it? And you should, should, should you still be just think focused on why do you, what is your purpose and what are you trying to achieve um, and what your, uh, whether people know you for that or don't know you for that doesn't really matter as long as that's what you feel like you're doing or achieving. Well, it can matter. It can definitely matter if people, if, if you need to be known in order to achieve what you're achieving, then, that might not be that you need to be known for, but you, you may need to be known, that's for sure. Like I I had to accept at a certain point that I couldn't do what I want to do and completely hide. I have to be out in the public, I have to be known. And that, that was a decision, I had to make the decision that I'm willing to accept that. Um, because when I was younger, I always said I didn't want to do that. Um, yeah. This is so interesting. It's not often that I have this feeling like, um, yeah, is it just a non-question? Because this is a common question. What do you want to be known for? He was known for this. She was known for that. I'm still veering towards that that's for other people to decide. Mm. Um, and that when business owners try to decide that for themselves, it, that's like, that's not the bit that they should be doing. I'm I'm going in that direction at the moment, but I don't know if I'm right either. So therefore, if you if I asked you the different question around saying what is your purpose, value, and contribution to the world, would you be able to answer that better yes. than what do you want to be known for? Yes. So what is that? Liberation of the human spirit. There you go. So therefore, that is what your purpose is yeah now if somebody described you that as you know the that's what you were known for in past tense so to speak or known or current tense okay there's an alignment between what you're known for and what you what your goal and contribution and purpose is so is it really is it the same thing as a question and one is just somebody else's view compared to your view it's a judgment of it um it, uh, clearly, it's a, if, if they align, that's a good thing, because apart from anything else, you don't have to think about the question. <laughs> it's like, ooh, that's a relief. Um, 
I just, you know, if I take you as the example, I just see that different people know you for different things anyway. So I can say those nice words. They have a very deep meaning to me. It's something that I'm working on. It's something that I know. If I said those words, people would say, oh, yeah, that's kind of sort of thing Sarah does. They might not use those words themselves to describe me, but some of what they describe would be quite similar, probably, and some mm. would be really different. To be known for it, like, to me, it's more important to get it done than it is to be known for it. Sometimes you need to be known for something in order to get it done. But if that got done, if there was really like, um, I, I was able to contribute to people really being able to free their spirit, to experience that kind of inner freedom, lots and lots of people. And I wasn't known for it, but there was a lot of it. That would be amazing to be known for it. The only thing it adds to me is that it enables, it probably enables more of it to be done because people find you. So it's more of a business. It's more like a kind of marketing thing than, but yeah. to be known for it as a human being, I don't know. I just don't know how important that is. Yeah. And the other thing that, that was running through my head was that what you might be known for as you know, as a teacher, for example, just if you put a, a label on, on on a functional thing that you do, compared to when people pass away and they're known for something, you know, they don't. They might say that you know you're a teacher, but they'll probably more talk about um, known for being. Uh, you know, uh, they they more talk about this this relationship aspect or known for being a really happy, vibrant, caring. They, they're all these no, sorts of things. That I think that's just up. to make the family happy. Like they say that about people who've had affairs and who've been, I mean, seriously, they say that about everybody regardless of how they've behaved. That's right. I don't and think so that's therefore, politeness. I don't think that has any <laughs> very much validity. I'm sure it has some validity. Some people are lovely people. Um, and But honestly, I, 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 I'm but not But what is that? But why do people do that then? If they're, we're if they're terrified. Not sort of... We're absolutely terrified of any ugly bits of truth coming out. And so we all put this beautiful gloss over our lives because we've hidden so much all through the way through our lives. The last thing we want is anything to come out after we're dead. So it's like, let's continue the gloss. The dead person doesn't mind at all. It really doesn't matter to them. But the family probably do mind because they want to, you know, we're so invested in what other people think about us, which is the kind of shadow side of this conversation. Mm. And we're mm. so invested in hiding our horrible little secrets and things on the whole that by the time we get to popping over to the other side, we probably don't want, you know, we don't want anyone to say, oh, he was actually a crotchety old f something. But, yeah. you know, for the last five years, which is very often true, um, <laughs> you know, people are not always their best in, in the years and months <laughs> before they die. Um, but we don't like to say that. I think that that's part of the lie that we all tell ourselves. We don't like to reveal what's actually going on with us. And we're taught that from a very early age. I just think that's actually part of not a very healthy human society. Is it like going back to that old statement, you know, you don't speak ill of the dead? <laughs> so well, it connects with that. Yes. Yeah, it, it connects with that. And it's like, what, maybe they're going to come and punish you or something or... <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you don't want anyone to speak ill of you after you're dead. Yeah, exactly. I, I, well, I, have, I have watched um, some just recent fictional movies and and, uh, and television shows where there has been funeral scenes and, and people have actually said it like it is, saying that he wasn't a very nice person or he was a pain in the backside or whatever it actually is. So it's nice to see maybe some of the truths sort of come out. But typically it ends up with, but he did his best or he tried or, he, you know, he was good at this particular aspect of it. So it's just, yeah, it's really interesting when you start to really, because these are, these are summations of our life. This is yeah. what we're really saying. Well, what was the summary of your life? What was the contribution? What was the, the high from between your dates on your tombstone? What did you actually do and contribute and, 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 and value that you created? But that's a bit like history, isn't it? You know, we write history. When I when I was at, at school, we did history. It seemed so utterly irrelevant to me that I opted out of it as soon as possible because it was a series of dates with men killing each other and having, you know, um, 
winning something. That was all it was in those days. It, like I couldn't, just couldn't understand what it was about, didn't, couldn't relate to it at all. Other people are fascinated by all of that stuff. But, you know, then it, to me, I don't think you could ever sum up a life because a life is a series of moments where there's so much going on in any moment that why would you even try to sum it up? I understand if you've got to make a nice speech, you need to say some nice things about a person. But really and truly, when we try to make us, we can tell stories, but one of the things I notice is I gain years is there are simply more and more stories and where a 25 year old can write their story you know like when you have to write for your business what's your story or your origin story they can do that really easily because there's only one or two stories there there are so many stories that you can write when you get a bit older and you can choose from but even those stories are just an edited tiny little perspective on something that you've kind of produced for other people you know to entertain other people that's totally valid but it's not your life no but it's a body of work that you've produced which well, is made a contribution most people don't produce a body of work are they contributing less i just think some of us are body of work people and some people are you know mums and dads and some people are are they're doing other but things even they're making but their, their body of work like a a, a mother who's, you know, say full time looking after the kids and all that sort of stuff. So it doesn't necessarily have a contribution in a workplace environment sort of type thing, but because the home is their workplace, their body of work fundamentally is the children that they're, they're raising, so to speak. I, I so therefore, so yeah. therefore, from that perspective, I see everybody has a body of work, no matter what position or title or or whatever they're doing, they typically are producing something of value and making some sort of contribution to the world. Um, in business, we probably just have a greater platform and a greater ability to create a bigger body of work maybe, but not necessarily more important than raising a child, for example, but it is a body of work. We're better at putting labels around it. Yes, we're probably better at... Cause, because you have uh, to in business, you have no choice in business. If you don't put labels around it and if you don't tell stories about it, nobody ever knows about it. And then your business is not successful. And, and therefore, you, you're able to sort of um, put some uh, sort of, a, you know, your testimonials or the, your case studies or your stories and that sort of type of stuff. You can sort of pick the ones that are good ones. Whereas if you're a parent and you've got a child, basically you're going to be judged based on the, you know, the, the production of that child's output you know, later on in life as well. So therefore, and you haven't got the ability to change If your child them. ends up an alcoholic or something, were you a bad parent? Probably not. No, not necessarily. You know, who knows what's playing into that? So the more we talk about it, the more I can feel that, that there's a sort of avoidance of going to what do you want to be known for because it it limits it limits who I am in the eyes of other people and in the eyes of myself mm. and I'm more and more tempted to let other people know me for whatever they want they can put whatever labels they want if they feel that it's useful to put labels on and for me I'm clear about what I'm doing and what I want to do and why I'm doing it and sharing that with others um, I think it's really important to get feedback as you go along. That's absolutely a part of it. I'm still not willing to say what I want to be known for. Mm -hmm. And I think that is 100% reasonable because, as you say, I, I believe it's limiting in terms of um, if you're only known for one thing, for example, I don't see why you can't be known for multiple things. It's just probably a label um, trying to succinctly put a label on something that you really shouldn't put a small succinct label on because it hopefully it's a rich body of work over a course of a life that actually transcends lots of different you know labels and things that you've actually achieved as part of you know to I think it, to simplify it down to a label or a thing um, is, is as you say I think it is limiting and and therefore it's not necessarily useful at the end of the day either. So one thing that people sometimes say about people is like, he really lived or he lived his life to the full. Mm. If you could really say that, that would be a nice thing, you know, for somebody to say, yes, yeah, she lived her life to the full. But if I'm honest, I can look back on some of my younger years. I don't think I was living my life to the full. So it wouldn't be true. I've got better at it. And it's a nice idea. But 
<laughs> Would it really be I'm true? I'm smiling because of the fact that usually when people say they live their life to the full, they've done some pretty outrageous things in their life. And they probably just once again in, in, in a uh, eulogy situation sort of saying, it was a, all they say is a character. <laughs> you know, they, they say all these things, or, or, you know, the word interesting or unique, you know, all those sorts of labels start to come out to describe behaviour that's probably not kosher with uh, what we were speaking about before in terms of being a inverted commas, a good person or a wonderful person, so to speak. So, yeah, I think you're right, though, in the, in the purest form of saying lived a great life, lived a life, you know, live, lived a full life, you know, you're starting to say, well, they explored lots of things, made lots of contributions, uh, you know, didn't limit um, themselves to a particular thing. So it, it, it becomes... Um, a fuller experience is what I'm hearing rather than a limited experience. Yes, I think for me, the richness of life, which might be simple, it doesn't have to be that you do a lot of things. It might be some people do a lot of things to live a full life. Other people experience a lot of fullness in quite simple things. I think there are many mm. ways that you can do that. But to feel that life is really worth living, um, that's... But that's for me my personal experience like whether other people know me for that do i really care maybe maybe not well you only care based on what you're saying before to ensure that you're getting feedback on what you're actually doing to ensure that, not labeling but just at least you're getting some feedback on saying well is this really making the contribution that i wanted to make in terms of what i'm doing yeah, I mean, I suppose the thing that you do have to look at is, and, and, and perhaps is where it really shows up, is supposing I'm putting myself out there teaching this whatever it is, and actually everybody knows me as like, oh, no, she's really horrible, and she doesn't do any <laughs> of the things she says. <laughs> that wouldn't be a good situation. So from there, you can see that there is some value in it. Just, I mean, that would be very useful feedback, if un extremely unpleasant. Um, it does tell you that there's there's something in there. <laughs> something in there. well there's no alignment and therefore yeah. no integrity for what you're really saying that you're putting yourself out there to be and actually achieving yeah so the commitment and the and the implementation the achievement are in alignment yeah exactly so i think alignment is is a more important thing um alignment really gives satisfaction and um it makes it much easier to have that kind of rich or fulfilling life experience and it's likely that people will know you for things that, it, that at least feel aligned they might they might they might know you for different aspects of your life but they feel aligned with who you are as a human being that that feels like if we really just focus on the fact that there's a human being in the middle of this then mm. that feels good to me and sometimes you receive labels through other people's insecurities as well. Um, and so you end up with a label because, um, you know, there's a jealousy element associated with it. So, you know, there, and that's the other thing that we have to be conscious of. And that's why I don't get caught up in labels either. It was just spark the thought process more that conversation over dinner about the fact that we do label. And it's about, well, you know, what do we what do we do with that? And I think it's been a good conversation today. So we'll, don't worry about the label, still come back to what the purpose and contribution is. Make sure you're getting some feedback along the way to say there's an alignment piece there, um, but don't get too caught up with the whole, he was known or she was known for X. That's really what I'm hearing from this conversation. Yeah, we can check out each other's eulogies, maybe from the other side, who knows? <laughs> See how it worked out. <laughs> Or we end up writing each other's, I don't know, at some point in time, whoever goes first. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's been an interesting conversation and one that we probably, uh, you know, it was one of those ones where, it, it, you know, I think some of these conversations that we have, which are great, go from all different directions, but hopefully what they ultimately do is just spark some thoughts for people to go, oh, okay, that's an interesting concept and, and how do I feel about it? And I think that's really important to do that. Because you, what I like to do is create space for people to then think about things and not necessarily give the answers, but for them to come to their own conclusions on the answers. And I think those are the good conversations to have. Exactly. exactly. Well, thank you, Matt. Thanks, Sarah.
You've been listening to The Spirit of Business with Matt Murphy and Sarah McCrum. If you'd like some insight into the spirit in which you do business, a great place to start is by looking at your relationship with money. Find out more by taking the Money Scorecard at moneyscorecard.app. And we'll be back next week. Thank you.